Hey folks, I'm Funky Monkey. Welcome to the first shorty of the series. And we're kicking things off with a look at Ardman Animation's most recognisable and lovable creations, Nick Parks, Wallace and Gromit. <laughs> Originally shown between 1990 and 2008, Wallace and Gromit are a scatterbrained inventor and entrepreneur, Wallace, and his dog, Gromit. Their adventures rarely stray far from their native Lancaster, excepting their first outing, a sojourn to the moon, which made for a grand day out. They've also dealt with the wrong trousers, had a close shave with a wool seller's dog, and experienced a matter of loaf and death when the former bako light girl is more than she appears. Let's begin at the beginning with a grand day out. Nick Park started working on this film in 1982. In 1985, he was picked up by Ardman while still working on a grand day out in his spare time. The finished piece was copyright dated 1989 and first shown on television in 1990. But is it any good? Considering that A Grand Day Out was Nick Park's diploma film from university, and that it took him eight years to complete, it's a great achievement. Sure, plot-wise it's a little thin, being that the original script included a fast food restaurant on the moon, and a subplot of Gromit breaking his master out of jail, but Park was advised it would take as long again to add these plots. Thus, we have what we have. And it is a good film, filled with comic touches, and built on a ridiculous premise. And Peter Salis, who up until that point was known for the genteel sitcom Last of the Summer Wine, is a genuinely lovable idiot, in the guise of Wallace, who seems to get more oblivious as the situations go on. With only the barest minimum of help, and working on it in his spare time, a grand day out took nine years to make, all told. The next Wallace and Gromit film was produced in-house at Ardman, and only took three years to make. The Wrong Trousers also introduces us to a new antagonist, Feathers McGraw. Let's see if you can go right with The Wrong Trousers. The Wrong Trousers was the real test. The difficult second film, but it's far from difficult, as Wallace and Gromit deal with the trials and tribulations of letting a spare room. And honestly, the clues are there if you look hard enough. Feathers McGraw immediately deciding on Gromit's room over the spare does stand out to me as a clue to McGraw's nature. Well, that and the fact he's a notorious thief. But still, the plot is tight, the pacing is well balanced, between the emotional farewell when Gromit packs his bindle, which still tears me up, and the climactic train set chase finale. The third of the series appeared in 1995, and even included a love interest in the shape of Wendelin Ramsbottom. But could a close shave be considered a cup too deep? Love rears its ugly head in a close shave, and while it could have smothered an otherwise great half hour short, it's handled lightly enough as not to be intrusive. And again, the pacing, and the subtle feeling of menace in our villain Preston just cuts through the twee that little bit and raises the stakes, making the climax that much more thrilling. We should mention that A Close Shave also introduced the world to Shaun the Sheep, who would spin off into his own series and an upcoming movie. Also, Shaun's series would have a spin-off of its own, in the shape of Timmy Time, a programme for younger viewers in which the lamb Timmy goes to preschool and makes a whole bunch of new friends. The final short to date, and possibly the final short of them all, considering actor Peter Salas' declining health, arrived in 2008. This time, our heroes are bakers, but a mysterious serial killer is looking to make her own grisly baker's dozen. Let us then conduct our own taste test on a matter of loaf and death. In the wake of the curse of the Weir Rabbit, could Wallace and Gromit return to the small screen? Well, they certainly proved they could with a matter of loaf and death. And while this one is the newest to my eyes, it's still jam-packed full of clever little touches, if you know where to look. 
And while the humanising of Payala Bakewell is a mistake in my eyes, I did enjoy the revenge of her abused poodle Floffles. So then, four half-hour adventures with Lancaster's daftest inventor and his dog. And it's a clean sweep, as I'm putting all four of these adventures into the House of Love. These films mostly tend to get by on a formula. Wallace creates a situation, or encounters a woman. Gromit investigates and gets in over his head. Wallace is oblivious and damn near gets himself killed. Gromit saves the day. Denouement where the status quo is restored. And it works. It's hard to say anything negative about these shorts. Because they're not deeper art, they're entertainment. They don't have a message. Perhaps other than don't get in over your head with wool shop owners or suspicious lodgers, or even the suspiciously unliked bako like girl. My point then, is that a funny film can have them rolling in the aisles, but while a serious film might be lauded, most of us would probably prefer that more visceral reaction, and want to make a funny film. And that's the charm of Wallace and Gromit. It's funny, silly, and a great way to spend a half hour. So put the kettle on, lads and lasses, and don't forget the crackers! And save a few crackers for next week, as I'll be reviewing the Pears Soul cinematic outing, The Curse of the Weir Rabbit. For now though, I've been Funky Monkey, and you've been watching A House of Love Shorty. So long! Join the heroic legion of Patreon subscribers today! You could get your name in the credits, early access to new episodes, request your favourite game, movie or anime to be reviewed, or even be in the show yourself. Sign up at my Patreon site. I'll see you there!